as the tools and best practices used to train machine learning models have matured over the past several years, there's been a shift toward focusing on streamlining operationalization of machine learning in a scalable and responsible manner. And in the true broad steps within operationalization are deployment and ongoing observation of production models. So this panel and discussion will focus on the need for AI observability and key considerations for adding observability to an organization's AI infrastructure stack. Well, there's definitely been a shift towards operations with the rise of ML ops. Um, a recent report gave the figure that 25% of the top 20 fastest growing GitHub projects in Q2 2020 concern ML infrastructure, uh, tooling, and operations. Uh, and Google Search has seen an uptick uh, on this. Um, explainability and monitoring are really a key piece of this. Teams needed to monitor uh, models throughout training, uh, training, validation, mm. and deployment. So really the whole life cycle. You know, it was a picture of a time series, any time series. And you know, it looks normal, seasonal, year, year after year, and then just COVID hit. And you know, it's different for finance or for, for users or for whatever it is, but it's just, this is every time series you will look at now for the next X years as a <laughs> data scientist. And so, you know, if you don't have a way of recognizing when you're totally out of uh, the input distribution, like you're going to have problems. Like the airlines experienced exactly this because all of their pricing algorithms are automatic these days because they have to compute so many of them. So when COVID hit, prices just dropped through the floor because the algorithms thought that was the way to get people to, to get flying again, but it didn't recognize that there was no elasticity in a pandemic. So. so something like bias and fairness with respect to vulnerable groups is, is a very high stake use case where you have to have had that. Um, and that's something to, to focus on industry-wide for everyone. I think explainability to me is really the next step and it helps you drill down and debug and understand what's happening uh, at, at a lower level. The debugging models is really a, something that's, um, I think of it as, as, as something that's developing. Uh, we, we don't have in the industry a very good way of doing this like we have in traditional software. So that's something I'm actually very passionate about. Um, and monitoring to me is a key piece of that. And monitoring has to happen throughout the entire life cycle. So it, this is really important, crucial, um, and has implications for end users. And again, most importantly for very high stake use cases when you're dealing with fairness and, and um, vulnerable groups, for example. Like uh, ML monitoring and ability to drill down and explain that stuff is sort of inextricably linked. And then effective monitoring needs explainable AI monitoring. And so, uh, and then the reason for that is it allows for fast detection of issues, fast resolution of issues. It also helps ML engineers develop a better intuition around uh, which areas are worth spending more time and energy on. And while also, uh, you know, giving us complete visibility and uh, it uh, finally helps folks develop a stronger appreciation toward the robust ML infrastructure stack. So I think, uh, you know, Fiddler's tool and explainable monitoring has really been uh, kind of a game changer as it pertains to a step function improvement on how we monitor and react to challenges as we see in the marketplace. Monitoring is important in general, um, but with machine learning specifically, we've seen, uh, you know, things will go wrong, right? Like you have to assume that things will go wrong um, and your machine learning team will be under the gun to, to fix it quickly. Um, and the problem is, so the two sides of this are looking at your data, understanding what's happening, um, and then figuring out why it's happening, right? So in your models, um, if you have a model that you can't interrogate, where you can't determine why you know, the accuracy is dropping, um, that's a very stressful situation. So uh, you know, it's, it's common in companies that are operational with machine learning that there's you know, some one day staff meeting where people are looking at metrics, and then the, uh, the shit kind of flows downhill and it goes all the way down to, you know, some M machine learning engineer with their manager breathing over, over their neck saying, what's going on? Why is this dropping? And it's a stressful, you know, 24 hours or 36 hours until they debug it and resolve it. And we need better debugging tools. Um, so I think this is why you know, stuff like Builder is pretty exciting um, because a lot of this is just, you know, done manually um, currently. Um, and ad hoc, and it's very, uh, you, you know, it's, it's very difficult. There's like some notebooks flying around and emails, 
um, we really need to, you know, have benchmarks that we're looking at consistently and continuously. Sometimes there could be a lag between, you know, folks doing stuff and some value getting generated and sort of demystifying uh, sort of AI by virtue of allowing people to, you know, sort of quote unquote fiddle with the, with the inputs and develop an intuition around how that impacts the output really goes a long way in terms of trust building so that folks can really appreciate how difficult it is to generate incremental value and also see, you know, a potential impact of those decisions as well. Uh, so it's, it's so much more complex than people think. So uh, if you have a lot of features going into a model, you know, um, it's like pushing on a rug. So changing one thing can have ripple effects and then you need to retrain. And so the complexity level of this is so much higher than like uh, you mentioned the deterministic software where it's kind of one and done. You write, you know, hard coded rules, essentially uh, the, the application works as expected. Um, and so I think this starts to bleed into almost thinking about then how do what's normal? How do you set up bands of what's a normal behavior for a model? Um, it's very different than traditional testing, which is uh, more uh, true or false, right? Now. We have to think about a way to do this comprehensively, to have a unified understanding of, of potential sources of unwanted consequences. Those unwanted consequences can actually creep in at any part of the ML life cycle, right? So it's it, the data is one part of it, but there's increasing evidence that it can, can happen anywhere in the pipeline. Um, and bias and fairness, it really, this must become, if it isn't already, a key understanding, a, a key dimension of the, the development life cycle. So closely inter it's very closely inter intertwined with other things like robustness, accountability, privacy, trans 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 transparency, and control. But companies must think about it holistically in, uh, in the context of the entire ML pipeline, um, all the way from design to to development and then finally they must uh, they really should have monitoring for for buying uh, for uh, bias and fairness continuously in order to make sure that you, you don't just fix the problem once but it that it, it remains um, something to to watch out for um, as time goes by strongly believe in this idea of trust but verify and what I really mean is that uh, you know, as we're leveraging these massive data sets and advanced AI technologies to create leverage for the business, it helps to have checks and balances that are automated so that we can kind of uh, quantitatively measure the gap between the intention and the impact. I think that when people think about responsible AI, I think sometimes they think about responsibility in, in the wrong sense of the word, where you know, or responsible in the sense of society or, or you know, doing good. But in a different sense, I think that if companies think of it as you know, we are responsible for the outcomes of this model. Somebody needs to be responsible for what happens here. I think that that forces the issue of thinking about you know, exactly what we're talking about of how do we have explanations, how do we have monitoring, how do we have. Uh, things like that, because, you know, if humans, you can build products and humans can make decisions that have bias without ML, but somebody's ultimately responsible for that and can be held accountable for that. Just because it's in an AI black box doesn't mean that nobody's responsible. Somebody still needs to be responsible.